Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I once knew an old woman who swallowed a fly. And I'm Gary. And today we're going to review and discuss The Fly, which came out in 1986 from director David Cronenberg. Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well, the story follows Seth Brundle, played by Jeff Goldblum. Seth has just developed the greatest invention for mankind. But after a test run using a human subject, he starts to go through some changes and we are told to be afraid, be very afraid. Am I different somehow? Is it live or is it Memorex? This is a remake, mm. you know? And of course we live in the era of remakes every day. You yeah, know? yeah. The original Fly came out in 1958 with Vincent Price. Yeah. And was an adaptation of a short story from a Playboy bo uh, story <laughs> called the, the Fly. Yeah. And uh, that film also had two sequels as well. The Return of the Fly and The Curse of the Fly. <laughs> you know, and those were some old school black and white, also colorized Classics. films. The classics. classics they, 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 they were coming, you know, off the back of the success of all those monster movies. Yeah, yeah. And this is the film that introduced me to Gina Davies, Jeff Goldblum, and David Cronenberg. I didn't know who any of them were before this film. Yeah. Yeah, I was exactly the same. I mean, I, I had watched the uh, classic version on Channel 4 and, you know, absolutely loved it. The classic black and white B-movie, monster movies, the fly there with his hand and his head. And... Also loved the fact that, you know, it was told from the perspective of his wife. Yeah. She'd already killed the fly and she was trying to kind of explain it to people about what happened. I'd also already seen Earth Girls Are Easy <laughs> with uh, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum, which I don't know if I, I, I kind of enjoyed their performance in that. I don't, you know, I'm still not sure about that film, even after all these years. But I had seen Jeff Goldblum in, in The Tall Guy as well, along with Rowan Atkinson. And thought he was brilliantly funny in that. So when I saw the advert late one Saturday night on TV for The Fly starring Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum, I'm like, yep, yeah, okay, I'm sold. I can watch a film about a guy who's going to mutate into a fly, you know? This, this is a good time for horror movies. I mean, early 90s. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, I hadn't... Well, this is, it was late 80s, this one. Well, it come out, it, it, the, the film had come out late 80s, but I didn't see it until early 90s. Sure. You sure. know, once it had gone to cinema, VHS, you know, we'd rented it, and then I'd seen it on TV. Yeah. Um, but I'd never seen a lot of David Cronenberg stuff. You no, know, I remember seeing Videodrome on TV. Uh, I, I love Rabid, yeah. but I think, <laughs> I think I love Rabid for the wrong reasons. I love it in a, because it's a kind of Dawn of the Dead zombie kind of tale you know i'm not a particular fan of shivers it's more of the sexual yeah <laughs> zombie you know <laughs> scanners is fun yeah hell yeah you know but existence is as a mind fuck <laughs> but you know if we're talking cronenberg you know the fly yeah you know and like i said with the the opening of the film starts off with that blurry vision and immediately i was drawn into the fact that i'm seeing from the perspective of a fly yeah you know that's that's pulling me in already. Yeah, and you know, and then we do get introduced to Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davies' character as he, they're at uh, oh, a oh. science convention. Yeah, and uh, you know, Jeff Goldblum, he's just oozing charisma. He's just swooning I, at Gina Davies' character. He's convincing her to come back yeah. to his apartment like immediately. You know, she's he's convincing her that he has the best invention the world has ever seen. Yeah, and he and he he probably does. <laughs> you know, but he's he's got to sell it in a way that she's, you know, she believes it. And Gina Davis, oh, beautiful. Absolutely yeah. beautiful at this time. You know, we're going to get to possibly one of the greatest sequences in film where she takes off that stocking, you know, <laughs> at the lab. Because we see those telepods at first. Where he reveals them. And uh, I just think it's funny that he just starts playing the piano in his house straight away. <laughs> you know, as he's showing her around. And he's also there in the doorway with a giant padlock. It's like he's locking them in. It's like serial killer alarms are going off. But, but, but isn't it all, all kind of like mad scientist kind of thing as well? With yeah, that super music. Protected. It's kind of it's kind of also harkens back to the fifties and sixties black and white. Welcome to my lab. Dun dun dun. Can't let you leave here alive. 
But there's a nice little bit of uh, character building there where he mentions in the car where he's unstable. You know, he's just like, oh, I don't, I get travel sick. Yeah. And so in order to get over his travel sickness, he's built a teleporter. Yeah. So he doesn't have to travel anywhere conventionally. <laughs> and, you know, he goes to give her an example of it and gets her to remove that stocking. Yes. <laughs> and he successfully teleports it from one pod to the other. Great special effects. You know, even even now. Well, it's just... kind of like the Star Trek teleporter effect and then a... <laughs> but, but, <laughs> well, the, the, yeah, but the flash and the noise, it kind of scares you, but then it's immediately there and yeah. the door opens. I always love how those pods work, you know, with the little, the little light and the door slides to reveal what's being teleported. I mean, it will come up later on when they use it more and more. But you're already like, okay, this guy's got a good idea. But we know how this story is going to pan out. You know? <laughs> I like the fact that we also get um, Stathis Boran's character, uh, played by John Getz. He's kind of the ex-boyfriend. He's a total asshole. Yes, he And is he's a total also asshole. the film's hero. Yes. You know, because you, you, you're with Seth Brundle at this point. Yeah. You know, you're, you're enjoying this relationship that's blooming between him and gina davis and you're like it feels quite natural the two of them are a very nice fit together yeah yeah and then of course they do introduce the this uh, the editor her boss yeah who is you know turning up in her apartment you know in in her oh, shower yeah he's got a key you know <laughs> and, you know she tells him to give him the give her the key back and he's like no i think i'll just keep hold of it and i'm just like you know, this is a very 80s movie in which, you know, you'd expect her to get the police. You're like, no, you give me that fucking key back now. You know? Yeah, like, what? yeah. So the, the relationships between this triangle of characters, it's it's played with very well in the film. Build, building up to the point that, you know, Seth's emotions are being played with. He He's already revealed. He's, I, I love he's got that wardrobe of just one set of clothes. Yeah. You yeah. know, and... Well, it's he says it's like Einstein. He doesn't have to yeah. think about what he's going to wear that day because that's a waste of mental energy. He could put his mind on fixing teleporters. Yeah, fixing teleporters. But, but Ronnie is falling for him. And so she goes out and buys a really nice jacket. And Stathis has followed her there because he's realised she's stayed over. You know, they've had their first sexual encounter. And... He breaks down in the middle of the in the shop, and I'm I'm sat there watching it. I'm just like, yeah, you can tell the age of it because even the guy who works there is just looking at them like. <laughs> I love that line where she's like, "I'm onto something really big right now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't you get it? I am finally onto something that's big, huge. Yeah. What? His cock? Crude status. Very crude. <laughs> he might be a fucking douchebag, but. Pretty quick. <laughs> but this is a Cronenberg movie, and Cronenberg starts to introduce his idea of how teleporters works to us. We we see the first test on a baboon, yes. I believe it is. Yeah. And oh my god. <laughs> When I when I first saw this, I did jump when that thing hits the glass. Yeah, because it's just a bloody stump that oh. hits it. Oof. Yeah, and it smears down the the glass. And you're just like, yeah, that's that's gross. But the reveal effect, the baboon that has been turned inside out <laughs> and is flapping, at flapping. The bottom of this this telepod is truly disgusting. <laughs> You know? Yeah. Because you don't expect it. Not really. You don't, I mean, <laughs> I mean, we've we've seen teleporter malfunctions in Star Trek, and Star Trek would continue to play with teleporter malfunctions in Voyager. Yeah. Where it would cross, you know, mix two people into one. Of course, all being inspired by the fly, surely. <laughs> and yeah, you know, you, you don't actually see him ever remove the carcass or anything, do you? It's kind of like, let's go get the maid. <laughs> Go clean that up. I love the way he just he's just kind of looking in the camera. Yeah. You know, the, the, the cutaway to Gina Davis trying to get him to think what the problem is. Yeah. And he's like, fuck, fuck is what I'm thinking. It's like, he, he has to explain to the computer about flesh. The computer, you know. I love the computer. It's just one block right in the <laughs> yeah. middle of the room yeah. with one keyboard and one you know panel and a voice recognition <laughs> a voice recognition it's a bit slow but yeah, yeah it's ahead of its time 
and he has to explain to it about flesh and he has the experiment with the uh two bits of steak yeah you know transports one piece of steak for a telephone and then cooks both pieces of steak at the same time and it's the way gina davis kind of acts it about it being synthetic yeah like it has been turned inside out the computer has taken all the particles apart and then rearranged it into the way it it, it thinks it's supposed to be put back together and i always loved how that was easy for me to understand yeah you know i don't <laughs> need to understand the full science of it like jeff goldblum even explains you know uh with seth's character uh, seth brundle's character he gets a little bit from over here and a little bit from over there and he puts it together but nobody knows what they're doing they you know he kind of buys them cheap and i'm like yeah that's how mad scientists work, isn't it? <laughs> well, yeah, you, you do get explained his backstory that, you know, at the age of 20, he was a young protege, you know, he yeah. won the Nobel Prize. Uh, that he's a super, intelli super intelligent, gifted scientist, which is why he's allowed to go and work wherever he wants on his own. Yeah. And the, you know, government just fund him. They just give you money, keep, keep doing what you do. But he's also lonely. And so... Yes. Massively. This, yeah, this is why he, he kind of gives the story to, to Ronnie and he's really happy while she's well, around. The, the fact that now Brundle and Veronica are now having sex mm. and he's had the whole steak conversation. It's like having sex has awoken him yes. to how flesh works. And so he he's trying to program that into the computer as well after yeah. that awakening. Do you think he was a virgin? No, I, I, it's possible, but yeah. I doubt it. Mm. But it doesn't, not yet. I haven't taught the computer to be made crazy by the uh, flesh, the poetry, the steak. So I'm going to start teaching it now. He's kind of lost that, a bit of that innocence. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and now he's just driven once again to get the teleporter to work. And it's time for another baboon test. <laughs> and it works! Yes! <laughs> I love that camera shot where it kind of comes above the telepod. Yeah. And the... the the baboon comes running out and just jumps on Jeff Goldblum. And I'm like, yeah. oh, thank God. But it was the back of, of my mind. I'm like, oh, shit, well, I know what's coming. There was kind <laughs> of like an animal patriarchy thing going on where the baboon kind of looked up at Jeff Goldblum and was like, yeah, OK, I'm not going to take no shit from you. <laughs> He's like, yeah. like nearly seven feet tall or whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but with this successful test, Ronnie is called away because Stathis has decided to release a magazine detailing yeah. Seth's work, which... Seth doesn't want yet. No, he wants the project complete. He wants to be able to teleport humans successfully before they publicise it. Yes. And Ronnie is called away and Seth, under alcohol, decides, hey, you know what? I'm going to go for the teleporter. And you hear that buzzing and you just see the fly on the inside of the glass. And at first, after the teleportation and he steps out, he just... You know, Jeff Goldblum, Goldblum style just steps out, just looking around. But it, there's something behind his eyes. Like he's seeing everything from a new perspective. Yeah. And what would begin from there is a very, very slow transformation mm. into something else. Uh, but it's, it's layered so fantastically well where, you know, Veronica comes back. She explains, you know, that she's had to deal with an ex-boyfriend. He apologises for being jealous of her, yep. not really understanding what's going on. But he does explain that in his in his jealousy, he went through the teleporter. Yeah. And they go out for lunch and you see him just spooning loads of sugar into his, into his drink. Yeah. You know, you start to see other little clues that he's undergoing a metamorphosis. Do you normally take coffee with your sugar? What? <laughs> Well, he does have sex with her a lot. All night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I think this is, this is probably the film that made me fall in love with Gina Davis. Because he... It, it, it's, it, it's all this extra energy he's got. You know, mm -hmm. the continuous just love making, as well as him trying to, I don't know, acrobatically balance on chairs and run up walls and stuff. And yeah. you... you you're noticing around his face as well where... Starts to get lesions and yeah, sores. spots are turning to up. And you can see on, on uh, Gina Davis's face that she's starting to be repulsed. You know, but she loves him so much that she wants to be around him. And his character changed. Jeff Goldblum, angry, screaming at her in the face that she's jealous and she's a fucker and this and that. You know, 
I start to just feel really heartbroken for Veronica. Yeah, yeah. Well, I did as well because I'm like, she's just come from, you know, a horrible relationship. Yes. And now it looks like she's about to step into a really abusive one. You know, where he's he's kicking her out because she can't have sex, you know, 24 hours straight. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'm going to have to go find someone who will have sex with me constantly, you know, without breaking. But it, <laughs> have the stamina. But it's, so it's because he feels, you know, he has all this energy because of the telepod. Yes, yes. And yes. because he now has, you know, fly DNA <laughs> embedded in his own. And but Veronica's afraid to go through the telepod. You know, she's afraid of teleporters anyway. Yeah, yeah. Most people kind of probably would because you are being deleted. You know, you are you are ending your existence. You know, in one sense of the of the word. Yeah. And then being reborn in another pod. You know, is that the same you that went into the other pod? Really? You know, it's it's a whole philosophical question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Once so she's afraid of it. Yeah. And so she refuses. To be a part of it, you know. Also, she found those large hairs growing mm. out, out of Seth's back, you know. So she, yeah, she's repulsed and she doesn't want anything to do with it. And so he he kicks her out and he goes into the town to go <laughs> find someone to fill her spot. Oh, he goes into that bar, you know, and he just looks around. He sees some people arm wrestling and he sees sees this girl and he's like, "Done, I'm taking you." Yeah, and he's like, "So you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat your boyfriend at arm wrestling first, and just the the this." The determination on Seth's face that he's like, you're not going to... He doesn't even look like he's putting any effort in. No, he's just, <laughs> he's just holding it. And the other guy is just putting all of the strain into his face that when you hear that snap... Nah. <laughs> and and even worse, that when you see the arm laying on the table and the blood pooling, that you, you're... you Well, I'm afraid for the girl now because he just kind of stands up, grabs the girl's arm and pulls her out. And they carry on going to a bunch of bars. And then he... Takes her back to the lab. It literally carries her all the way up the stairs. Yeah. It's just bursting with energy. Just, you know, go, go, go. And he steps through the teleporter and comes out and has another sex sequence with her. But at this point, you know something's up because now he physically also wants to throw her through the teleporter. Yeah. He wants her to feel like him, which isn't going to happen unless you throw another fly in it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but he doesn't. Still quite get that yet. No. And, you know, it's awkward moment where he's got his, you know, his one night stand and Veronica's come back. Oh, God, I love <laughs> that line where he's like, yeah, I live with my mum too. <laughs> oh, I forgot to tell you, I live with my mother too. Mum, meet Tony. Uh, so the other girl, she, she makes her exit. And, you know, we have quite an emotional sequence here. It's one of my favourite favorite scenes in the film where Seth really does understand that something's not quite right. Yeah. Uh, that he is transforming. And she explains to him that he's not human or what hairs she found on his back after test revealed that he, you know, they're the, not human. The, the, they're insect hairs. Yes. And he, he takes the time to, to... Well, he kicks her out again. Again. He's like, don't, don't, you know, don't come back. We're done. Yeah. But then he goes to the computer and he starts working on it and the computer breaks it down to him and says, look, there were two things in the telepod and I fused them together because... What I was I supposed to do? Yeah, what was <laughs> I supposed to do to it? And it's it's a bit of a time jump now where he kicks her, kicks her out and then rings her up and she says, oh, it's been four weeks yeah. since we've seen each other. And she goes around to the, uh, goes around to the warehouse to, to see Seth and I, I think this is the, like the only time I remember him looking like he's in pain. Yes. In the film, he's got he's got two canes, walking sticks. Yeah. You know, and we'd already seen at this point that, you know, that we had that bathroom sequence where he was had his fingers. Oh, ah. You know, and you know, he pulls he pulls off a fingernail. You know, and he squeezes ah. the end <laughs> onto the mirror. Yeah. There's the whole overtone of sex in this film massively anyway it's a Cronenberg movie it's a Cronenberg movie so of course it's going to be there yeah uh, and so you know the whole film was also looked at at the time when it came out as a metaphor for AIDS you know this was at the time of the AIDS epidemic yeah a lot of people were frightened and they didn't understand stand it but they understood, you know, the, the, the body undergoing those physical and noticeable changes yeah. to which Seth is now rapidly undergoing. You know, Cronenberg said that 
it was more to do with with aging. That was his where he was coming from. It's like having a cancer or or aging where everyone yeah. undergoes it. And the 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 mention of time and of aging is mentioned by both Veronica and Seth throughout the film. Mm. Uh, and so you know, I kind of got a more sense of that than of you know the AIDS virus. Yeah, but I'm yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't. It, it still works. I mean, I obviously I didn't see it at the time it first came out. So when I saw it, I just saw it as a B movie shock horror. Yeah, um, yeah, on a disease on, movie. You yeah, know. on the first time viewing on a standard you, you know, know movie know going level. Yeah, yeah, I know there's multiple layers to it, but it's it's you know it's more sci fi horror. You know, and and the disease is obviously slowly taking them over. Um, but like, like I said, this is the first time I saw him really in pain because when Veronica leaves again and comes back, he's fucking, you know, climbing all over the walls. Yeah, he's you totally know? adapted to his body now. Yeah, it, it's it's like whatever, you know, Seth has accepted, he's now Brundlefly. Yeah. You know, and he's actually wanting to see how far this goes. But it gets to another horrible, horrible sequence where it's like, you know what? Let's make an educational video for oh, kiddies. Oh, <laughs> and he's sat there and he's like, this is how a fly eats its food. And he vomits and oh. And then he sucks it back up. Ready for a demonstration, kids? Here it goes. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I love I love the reaction from from Stathis when he's watching the videotape and he's like, "Oh my god!" And he can like, hear the slurping sound oh, effects. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's kind of at this point where now Seth is becoming the bad guy, and Stathis is slowly becoming the hero because he's the one supportive to Ronnie. Yeah. You know, Ronnie is trying to be supportive to Seth, but Seth is just like, uh, fuck, you know, fuck you! I can look at all this great shit I can do. I want to see how far this this disease goes you know we know deep down inside he's gonna turn into a fucking fly you know and what's that gonna bring but ronnie realizes that she's pregnant funny because all that sex will do that <laughs> but it brings up the question now of was it pre or post teleport yeah <laughs> you know what kind of baby are we talking about here and, and stathis is there to be supportive to her and you're just like okay so now this asshole is now the hero yeah, you know, yeah, he's like one of the first anti heroes I've ever, I think I've seen in film. Yeah, you know, where he truly is a douchebag, but is you know, there's a part of him that is a, oh, is a good, good guy. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. just don't want it. You just don't really don't want it. But yeah, you have that horrible nightmare sequence where she's oh. in the hospital and she gives birth to that. Uh, Magnet, larva larva thing, thing, you know, and and you know, um, Linda Hamilton. Uh, was offered the role in the film and she turned it down on that one sequence alone. She was like, I'm not filming that sequence so I'm not doing the film, you know, because it's disgusting. Yeah, it's pretty damn <laughs> disgusting. I mean, not as disgusting though as what Jeff Goldblum has gone through with the fly makeup. You know, from, if you just chart the course from us, from him going through the teleporter all the way up to him First losing his his fingernails, then losing you know he's losing his teeth, he's losing ear parts. He's got a collection collection of relics he calls them. Yeah. In his in his bathroom. That sequence where he's just like, hey, do you want to see my collection? <laughs> I was just like, no, it's gross. <laughs> but he's he's in this massive suit, and I just love the mannerisms. You know the way his head twitches or his eye twitches. Yeah, yeah. You know the way he's kind of sucking his teeth. Yeah. You know, and yeah, you know, he's got like six fingers. And even now, you know, 2018, uh, you know, I was just watching it on DVD, but it still looked even, even on even on even in HD. It, the suit looks fantastic. Now, there's bits where you can tell that it's kind of a bit of a rubbery suit and you can see where it's peeling away or pulling away. Yeah, but, but because I, but it feels also, like flesh yeah. that's coming apart, I'm like, it's so passable that even though you can tell it's the, a suit, yeah, it works. He's selling so, it to me. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, his movements, his, you know, Jeff Goldblum's twitches, you know. that <laughs> I didn't actually realise this until watching it now, what was um, that his penis... Is in a jar oh, in, yes. in, his, in his cupboard, <laughs> and obviously he turns around and he's talking to Ronnie before she goes to have the abortion, and obviously he's, it's kind of, you know, sheared off there, I suppose. Yes. And I'm like, ah, yeah, I like the continuity there. The film actually noticed that and said, we need to explain that to people. Yeah. You know, he's going to be stood there completely naked, just this 
weirdly shaped man. But again, there's a, another great moment and a callback to the original film where, you know, they're hugging each other and he's asking her to help me. Yeah. Help me. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, it's from the original fly where he's stuck in the web and the spider's coming. Yeah. Oh, that's a great, it's great. Help me. Please. Please help me. Ronnie, though, decides to have an abortion and Seth has come up with the idea of teleporting himself, Ronnie and the unborn baby through teleporters into a third teleporter and becoming all fused together. Well, yeah, the, the computer tells him, it was like, you know, you can reverse this if you, you know, teleport with another human, a pure 100% DNA specimen of a human. Yeah. So I was like, so he could go and grab any, bu any bum off the street, stick him in there, and would it fuse him with them? Do they merge? Um, would it? Well, I mean, if we're going off the back of the it's second It's because the sequel movie, kind yeah. of plays on that idea. If yeah. we go on the back of the second movie, I mean, Seth would be able to actually work it out. But the the way I understand it, the second person that teleports through would end up with all the deformities, deformities from the fly and yeah. Seth would be recovered. Yeah. But the way I understand it, how it works in this movie is that Seth wants to be in one form. Seth. Brundle fly, uh, Ronnie and the baby all in one giant form, which I'm like, no, that's not gonna work. Did you see what that <laughs> happened to the monkey? <laughs> but it's the way he he smashes through that window to to rescue her, kidnap her, I suppose, and take her back to the lab um, to to do the experiment. And Stathis turns up with a shotgun, and oh my god, oh my fucking god! When I first saw the sequence. I fucking shit. I, <laughs> I did. You know, he, he spits or vomits onto Stathis's hand. Yeah. And just melts it away. And I'm watching, you know, John Getz act that is he's feeling his whole hand just completely melt away. His yeah. whole body's going into shock. He collapses on the floor and Jeff Goldblum kind of just vomits onto on his, his ankle. <laughs> Yeah, I should say that the uh, the creature in special effects and makeup was done by Chris Wallace. Yeah. And he'd worked on films like Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark with nice. the melting Nazis. Nice. Uh, he'd also worked on Gremlins, Arachnophobia, House 2, <laughs> you nice. know. And uh, he, they were, he was literally given the, the job. He was like, do you want to do Gremlins 2 or do you want to do The Fly? And he was like, mm, we'll do The Fly. Yeah. And, you know, the, the makeup work and the effects in this film are so good. Yeah. That, and that vomit scene on the hand and on the ankle is just revolting. It's disgusting. I think the, the actual vomit is, is milk, honey and, uh, and eggs or something. Yeah, yeah. And so just to give it a thick, ugly consistency... But then the melting effect as well, and Stafford's reaction to burning away. See, I gotta say, the only thing that threw me off was if you pause it just right, and I, I did because I, I had to go get a drink. And when I came back, it was just a, a prosthetic head, which you know, eyes were closed, mouth was open, and oh, the oh, white oh, stuff was oh, yeah, coming out. The actual fly. I'm yeah. like, oh, <laughs> you know, I paused it at the right time. Yeah, but I, uh, you know, Chris Wallace won the the Oscar for for best effects uh, yeah. in a film of that year, and of course. The very first end credit that comes up at the film is of his, you know, before cast, before director. It was guy who did the makeup effects. Nice. First credit to come up at the end. Yeah. And so well deserved because well, the effects at this point are only about to just get in more intense. Yeah. It's built up so brilliantly. I mean, the music has been keeping us going. Yeah, okay. Howard Shaw's music in this is amazing. Right at the start of the movie, you had that big orchestral, big classical kind of hellish music playing yeah, yeah. and you knew you knew something bad was happening but when you get to this point in the film your emotions are all high the excitement is on point gina davis has just convinced seth not to kill stathis because uh, then she'll probably know that he's truly dead yeah at that point he is truly gone and he he brings her down into his lab and he explains to her look i go in there you go in there and we all come out there and she's like no and he, she starts to try to fight him, and I, 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 I wonder if like he even feels the pain from this when she like rips off his jaw because it it just seems like the fly has always been underneath, and he's been wearing 
the Seth suit. Suit. <laughs> yeah. You know, because as she starts ripping it and tearing it off, it just it it just kind of breaks out. And I'd I'd love I kind of love the fact that there was a deleted scene where um, he had a leg appear from his abdomen. The, you know, yeah. the sequence where he walks down the the wall and he says, "Hey, what's that?" That was supposed to be a leg, and he's supposed to cut it off. But they, you know, decided not to film that sequence. Yeah. And I, I I'm glad of that because this whole big reveal, the it's, music playing, yes. the way he's pulling her, the the face twitching. I, I, I've always known it was just a giant model. Yeah. It wasn't a guy in a suit or CGI. It was. It was like a, a puppet. It was a giant puppet. But it's such a brilliantly done puppet. Yeah, you know they, 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 they sold it. They managed to sell it so well with the fact that they had Jeff Goldblum who was giving these like nervous twitches. Yeah, yeah. And so they're yeah. like, "How do we emulate this?" I know. We'll give this puppet his nervous twitch. twitch. Yeah. So it, you know, it sells you on the idea that it's the antenna, same person. Yeah. yeah. All, all go in the, you know? the giant arms. You know. And I love the fact that they didn't just go, "Yeah, we're just going to have a fly." You know, they went, "No, we're not going to have." A, you know, a standard fly. We're going to have a fly with human DNA in it. Yeah. yeah. So it is a bundle fly. <laughs> it is a bundle fly, yeah. And he throws her into one pod, climbs into another pod himself. The countdown has started. And Stathis, who, you know, gosh darn this man, is like really fucking down on his knees, picks himself up, uses the shotgun to damage Gina Davis's telepod. And... Seth is transported through his with half his door. Yeah. Oh. And that's horrible, that reveal when the door opens and he just falls out. Falls out, yeah. And starts making his way forward. You can see that his tail, you know, it's... Yeah, it's all connected to something. It's yeah. all electrical parts and metal. And yeah. Yeah, but it's it's so beautifully done as well. I mean, it's all this whole film has been like one big love story, which harkens back to the original film with the scientist husband yeah, and wife family, feature. Yeah. That you know, t t David Cronenberg ends this film so brilliantly with with Ronnie holding the shotgun, kind of in defence, but at the same time in a mercy killing way. And the way no, she doesn't want to do it, she just doesn't no, want to do no, it. No, she doesn't, but she knows she's gonna <laughs> have to. He can't live like that. She can't. There's no way. There's no back from this. This is. It's gone way too far. But the way that Seth kind of lifts up the shotgun and puts it to his head, like, please. Yeah. And then, but, and that tells you enough that there's still, you know, a, a conscience in there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, there always was, but his his ego had always got the better of him from the very start of the film. I thought this for this review was he knew what he was doing when he took Ronnie back. Yeah. To show her the telepods. And then when he found out, I suppose, that she was a reporter, he got all pissy and wanted to throw her out. But then he gets her back again. Then he throws her out again. Then he gets her back. Then he throws her to, All the way to the point where it's just like, kill me. Yeah. Just fucking kill me. And it is, you know, she she blasts and the puppet explodes, and she just like that's that's really sad. But then the film just ends immediately. Yes, that's you know? brilliant. I and, like that. You know, and the music's playing, and you're just like fuck. Yeah. But then it's like whilst the credits are going, you know, whilst you're getting ready to put the film behind you, you're just like shit. That is really depressing. <laughs> that's really fucking no, depressing. No, that's that's brilliant. You know, they they <laughs> no they, because they you the fly. you go through this amazing love story. You know, you kind yeah, of fall yeah. in love with both characters, yeah, yeah. and by the end of the film, it is just a fucking tragedy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and it's like you just you know, ten minutes after the film, you're just like, oh, that was horrible. No, <laughs> I'm always like, yeah, I can watch the fly too now. <laughs> yeah, it does. It makes you want to go into the fly too. You know, well, the, this film had like three endings. Yes, but, but yes. they did. They abandoned all of them. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, most of the endings. I think she got back with with, with Stathis, which you know, of course, most audiences would be like, "Fuck no! Why'd you go back to that asshole for?" Yeah, she kept waking <laughs> up after after having the dream sequence with the, with the baby, um, and Stathis is there, you know, telling her, "No, the baby's dead. No, the baby's fine. No, the baby's mine." <laughs> you know, there was one where she wakes up on her own, and it all ended. Always, always seemed to end with a butterfly baby. Butterfly sequence, baby, yeah. yeah. Which <laughs> it's awful. 
<laughs> it it just it it doesn't fit in with the tone of the movie. movie. No. You know, like there was also a deleted sequence where uh, Seth sends a well sends the second baboon and a cat through the teleporters to fuse them together to try out try out his idea, and audiences hated it because the you know he had to beat the cat to death yeah. because it was in so much pain. You lose sympathy with him when yes. He's- you yeah, know, killing a cat. Yeah, and even though it is a deformed monster and it's kind of a mercy killing, it's yeah, still yeah. gross and horrible. <laughs> it's it's so much better to to kind of feel sympathetic to Seth that it was a it was an accident. Yeah, you know, and he was changed by this accident. But but Stavis is the one who's kind of caused this whole thing to to go in the direction yeah, it did I, by ter- by putting I, that magazine exactly, under the door. I thought the same thing as well. If if Stathis hadn't done that, she, she wouldn't, wouldn't have, have left. left. He wouldn't have gone through with a fly. But but then I brought up the question of what if she'd been stood there with the camera and they'd been getting ready and a fly had already flown through. Yeah, yeah. You know, and she'd been she'd been there the whole time. Still. <laughs> <laughs> there was another deleted sequence as well where um, Brundlefly is attacking Stathis and he's burnt his hand off and he's burnt his leg off where yeah. he picks up the foot yeah. and the, uh, the inner mouthpiece comes out of Brundlefly uh. and starts drinking. The, uh, the severed foot. <laughs> Ew. Uh, so yeah, there was lots of deleted scenes and, you know, they had lots of ideas, but what they, what they put in the film in its final version is, you know, I wouldn't change it. Oh, definitely. I mean, David Cronenberg managed to pace this movie so well, you know, for the first half hour, Seth is stepping. Through, Seth is stepping through the telepod. You know, in the first hour, he's going through his first uh, mutant changes, and then you've got a half an hour running time now, which is just going to end up with yeah, carnage shit everywhere. <laughs> carnage, you know? for sure. I have so many favorite sequences. I mean, most of them are the gore sequences. You know, uh, I love the first monkey test. I love, you know, when he, he sends... I love it when he sends the stake through and kind of explains it to yeah, yeah. Ronnie as well. You know, it's that whole, hey, look, it's a B-movie sci-fi. You know, we, let's get some more sci-fi knowledge in, into us. The, the the relationship between Jeff Goldblum and, and Gina Davis w- works really well. You know, I think you told me that they were together. They were a couple, yeah. They were a couple, you know, and... Which sells you believe it as an audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you, you know, knowing that now, when I see the sex sequences, I can see I can see that they get really close, which makes those sequences even more special. I suppose not so special after he's gone through the telepod, because you're like, get off him. You know, <laughs> you don't want that inside you. Um, I love the arm breaking sequence at the bar. You know, I love I I, I love the collection in the gla- in, in in the bathroom. I love the final sequence with the the vomit. the The whole film is, yeah, uh, yeah. The whole film is is special. There's there's memorable, and then there, there's favorite. Of course, the memorable stuff is the gore stuff. Yes, yeah. You know, you're never gonna forget that transformation. It's one of the best physical body horror transformations in, in film. Yeah, up yeah. there with American Werewolf. Definitely. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I love the uh, the arm wrestling scene, the the birth nightmare. You're never going to forget the bathroom collection, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the the vomit sequence and the finale. You know, it's all there. But I think my best actual uh, bit of dialogue comes from Seth when he's uh, he explains how he was an insect that dreamt that he was a human. Oh, yeah. And now the insect is awake, kind of yes. thing. And he talks about insect politics. He's like, I'm going to become the first insect politician. Yeah. You know, and it's all of those questions about identity. It's just like, ha- is is the fly conscious? Is the fly feeding him, you know, uh, controlling him? Because yeah. he says that he's losing control of his identity and that once the fly takes over, he doesn't know how much control he'll have left, which is why he's worried about Veronica and sends her away. Yeah. So all that sort of stuff is, you know, it gets the mind going. It's like, yeah. that's, your, that's your sci-fi stuff that uh, mixed with the horror, it's, it's a perfect marriage. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so, so many memorable sequences. I'm saying I'm an insect who dreamt he was a man and loved it. But now the dream is over, and the insect is awake. No, sir. 
Which is why, which kind of no surprise, I'm definitely recommending The Fly. It's easy to. It's one of the finest horror films ever made. It combines disgusting and relatable body horror with questions of identity. The film is highly engrossing with fantastic performances from Goldblum and Davies who really deliver their parts well, investing you in the story and believing the horror as it happens. The music score is also great. It captures the dread and the mood really yeah. well. It is one of Howard Shaw's best soundtracks. The creature effects are, are top of the line. They're brilliant and they stand up well today. It's a damn good film and it's one to watch and celebrate within the horror genre. It is an absolute classic. Hell yeah. It's a fucking classic. This one and the, the 58 you know, version. Just watch them both. Hell yeah. yeah. Watch one during the day. Watch one on a Saturday night. I quite enjoy The Fly 2 as well, so yeah. I would roll right into The Fly oh, yeah. 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. Mm -hmm.